Hello, man. Hello, you all right? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. So, um, thank, you for, uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to Mill Fan TV. No, thank you. It's a thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to come on. Thank you. So, I'm just going to ask you 10 questions and let's get straight into it. So, uh, first question, what was your favourite moment whilst at Millwall? I think I had so many, so many good memories, but I think, I think beating uh, Palace at home uh, when I think Punch, Jason Punch, and got the hat-trick and um, um, also, again, go, you know, going to Palace and, and playing there. And um, I think we won that game 1-0. One, one I think it was Theo Rock that scored. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, both, both great experiences and, you know, you talk about uh, the atmosphere at the den and, and um, the fans getting behind you and, and in, a, in a local derby to, to kind of get the, get the double over them that season. Um, you know, that was, that was definitely a highlight for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, second question, you played in quite a few positions. What was your favourite and why? That's difficult. I think, I think obviously I'd always been a centre-back, so um, playing midfield was a real challenge for me. And... Um, I really actually enjoyed it. You know, it was it was difficult at first. You know, it was kind of difficult to get my head around at first. But I think Kenny Jackett helped me immensely, and so so did the other players. But I think I, I really enjoyed midfield playing in the midfield, and I think um, I, I definitely enjoyed that the most because it was something different to me. It was it was a different challenge for me to to kind of take on, and um, and 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 um, you know, a, a different aspect of the game that you know um, helped me you know get better as a player on the whole. Yeah. Um, third question, obviously, you won Millwall Player of the Year, um, I believe, in 2011. This must have been a great uh, feeling to get the votes of the Millwall fans that are sometimes quite hard to win over. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, you know, joining Millwall, I was, I was actually quite apprehensive um, yeah. just because, of obviously, you know, the reputation kind of precedes the club. And, um, you know, from, from the moment I, I set a foot in the door, um, you know, I, I loved it. And the fans embraced me and... Um, I was so, you know, just, just very happy, so happy to, 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 to obviously win Player of the Year and get the vote from the fans. It meant such a lot to me, you know, coming in from obviously a, a, local, a local rival team, obviously not, not in the same uh, league at that time, but, and then obviously playing a new position as well. So, you know, that season was, you know, the whole season was a highlight for me. It was, was a high point for me and, um, you know, I enjoyed it. Can't, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, question four. Obviously, that moves on to uh, what was it like to play under Kenny Jackett? You meant you mentioned that you, uh, you he was he was really helpful. So yeah, what was it like to play under him? Playing under Kenny Jackett, he's he's quite an, an intense an intense manager. Um, very very clear on instructions on what he, he you know certainly to myself on on what he wanted you to do. And I think one of the the things with with uh, with Kenny and Mill was that and the, the the dressing room at that time was was that they know. They were, you know, they're sort of kind of like a true Millwall dressing room. They kind of know the fans, and I think it's important when you, when you play for Millwall and you're a part of Millwall that you have to, you know, have to buy into that, that, you know, that, um, you know, the club and the attitude and, and what's expected from, from not only the gaffer but obviously from the fans as well um, yeah. to have any success. And I think, you know, he got that down to a T, and I think he, he definitely helped um, myself, you know, realize what was, what was, um, you know, expected and. Um, obviously gave me a chance in, in, in the championship and in a different position and saw things in me that I possibly didn't think I could do myself. So he, he showed a lot of faith in me and I really appreciate that. Um, and um, um, I, I kind of learned a lot from him um, and through him learned a lot about myself as well. Yeah, he was definitely a fan's favourite at Millwall. Um, question five, your last team was Tampa Bay. Um, are there any major differences you noticed between um, the American Football League and yeah, there, there are some major differences. Um, the physicality is one. So, you know, if you're playing in, you know, the championship or League One, um, League Two, you know, it's a very physical league, high demand. Um, you know, the pace of the game is, is generally a lot higher. Um, um, saying that, the games in here, the games over here, there's, you're playing in different climates. So, when I was playing in Florida, obviously, it's really humid and hot. So, the games are kick off in the evening and, the humidity is, you know, crazy. It's crazy hot and humid. So the game at that point, it goes as fast as it can. It goes as fast as the elements allow it to go. Um, and then the next week, you might be playing in Canada where it's snowing. So yeah. you get these, these different elements that you're playing in. Um, and a lot of the times you're playing on turf, you know, AstroTurf pitches, which 
um, you, you would never play on in in England um, uh, at, that, at that level. So um, there are some differences, you know, and regarding the, the level of the game, when I first came over, um, it was very... It was very interesting, you know. There's some interesting things, you know, happening on the field. Certainly, you wouldn't have seen those in, uh, you know, people make those decisions in England. But I think now, the game's come such a long way in the four years that I've been, you know, certainly just before I retired, the standard um, had risen, you know, quite a lot. And so, I think uh, a lot of the players coming through now, coming coming into the into the into the US game, are are better players. Um, and I think the game's growing over here, and I think it's only going to get better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, question six. Uh, you became known as a great centre back, but how did you find that transition to midfield? It was, it was, it was. At times, it was tough, um, but again, you know, I, I embraced it and um, I, I loved it. Um, I just wanted to, you know, give it my best shot. And I think part of my game obviously was my athleticism, and um, I wanted to to work as hard as I could and you know win the ball back and give it to the people who were you know maybe more technically gifted than myself. Um, and again, the, the the way the team was set up and the players I had around me, um, it was it was it was an easier transition than than I thought it would have been. And again, Ken, Kenny was very clear to me. He said, you know, look, we're not looking for you to to be like Chavi or Iniesta in there, <laughs> um, um, which which you know probably would have been a disaster. He said, you know, just use your your experience and you know your athleticism and your attitude and you know bring bring what you have to the table and and that. That gave me a lot of confidence in there. That's that you know that used to sell me down, and um, that helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, in question seven, uh, how big a part does a pack den help Millwall players, but also intimidate the away team? It's huge. It's huge. As I said before, you know when you when you go when you're playing against Millwall, it's something that you're very conscious of, and uh, it, it really is massive. It's very intimidating for fans coming in, and players coming in. Sorry. Sorry, it's a, it's a, a truck okay. rolling past. Yeah, so it's it's huge. It's very intimidating for for fans coming in, and you know when you're when you know you're playing against more, you kind of you know what you're going into, and you you are going into into the lines. Then it's going to be loud, and um, um, you know you might take a bit of a bit of stick from the fans, and um, I think that all helps with with the uh, you know that kind of aura that surrounds Millwall. Yeah. So if I move that into a, into a, if I extend the question, so. Obviously, the restart date is on the 20th of June for the Championship. How big a loss do you think the fans will be to the, the Millwall players and the, and the results as regarding them? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. I think, I think at this stage, I think the players, the players will be... Sorry, two seconds. Guys, guys, Remy, can you be quiet, please, guys? Thank you. Sorry, mate. That's okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so I think I think at this stage, you know, the first few games certainly, I think the players are so desperate, be so desperate to get back to playing that initially um, it may not be a problem. But I do think it will have a factor on the games because, again, as we've just said, it's it's a huge part of who Millwall are is the fans and the den and the whole atmosphere of you going into into the den and and being intimidated and the intimidation factor. So I do think it it's possible it will have an impact on on the on the team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question eight: Who was the biggest character in the changing room during your time at Millwall? Biggest character. Again, another good question. I think, obviously, you had characters like uh, like Chopper, like Neil Harris. He was a huge character. Uh, Millwall through and through. Um, again, Alan Dunn, who'd been there a long time as well. Um, then we had obviously you know lone players come in like like Hamabuwatsa, who who was a character in himself. Um, so that's a tough question. Biggest character. Um, I'd probably go for. I'll probably just go for for Chopper. You know, just because. You know, again, he's a Millwall legend, and again, he's he's another guy who helped me a lot. Um, got a lot of time for Chopper. Obviously, he was at South End when I went on loan there as well, and uh, again, just kind of helps you understand what the club's all about. So you know, character wise, he's. He's 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 there always, kind of um, trying to help you out and trying to make you understand what the club's about. So if we uh, about Neil Harris, did you did you expect him to become the middle manager in the future, or or was that were you a bit surprised to see that? I wasn't entirely surprised. Um, 
I wasn't entirely surprised. I always felt like that would be his direction, and, and if he could, and if he could get the Millwall job, then I felt like he he would be the absolute right man for the job, you know, um, and he would he would do, you know, he would do his absolute best there. I was nervous for him taking it because if it did go badly for whatever reason, then I felt like his you know his status there as as a ledge, um, you know, would come into question. So I was a little bit nervous for him taking the job, but you know. He, he he did a great job uh, for a long time, and um, you know he's a he's a hardworking guy. No one can question his 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 love for the club or his desire, or you know, or him wanting to do the best for it. So um, at the end of the day, I, I was happy for him, and I'm sure um, you know he'll tell you himself. He, he he did his best there, and he he did well for a long time there. Yeah. Uh, in question nine, in your time at Millwall, who was the best Millwall player you played with? Because obviously there was quite a lot of um, of players that you could. Uh, could be in contention with this. Yeah, again, it's a difficult one because we had we had quite a lot of uh, loan players in. So obviously, you got the likes of you know Harry Kane um, coming in and Chris Woods and um, um, Andros Townsend came on loan and um, Adam Smith. So all all players that that have you know gone on to play in the Premiership um, and do you know very well for themselves. So again, that's a tough question. I think I think you've got to mention um, Harry Kane. Just because you know he was so good when he came in, um, you know his finishing and his, his all-round play was, was amazing. And I was I was uh, injured for the majority of the time he was there, um, but just from from watching the games and training, um, you know he, he had a real work ethic about him, and um, he, he just wanted to get better. He was quite young at that stage, and still kind of I think finding finding it, finding his uh, finding himself and um, you know how to prepare for games and, and the nutrition and and looking into that kind of stuff. But um, he had a real desire to get better. Um, so, you know, I think Harry Kane, you have to mention him. And then um, Jason Punchin, so influential in my time there, certainly playing. You know, you can give the ball to Punch in any t- situation and, and he'll get out of it. And he, he came up big time with, with very important goals. And then just a personal one for me, Liam Trotter. I think going into midfield and, and playing with someone like Trotts, he made, he made, again, he made it so easy for me to do my job. Um, and I think he's probably, probably a little bit underappreciated um, mm-hmm. at Millwall because of just his playing style. He's got this language style. He's a big guy, um, very calm on the ball. So for me, he, he was a top, top player at Millwall. And I think um, definitely underappreciated and uh, playing, playing next to Trotz, you know, made, you know, made, my, made, made it so much easier for me, made, made uh, the transition. A lot easier to, to get my head around. Um, so yeah, so I would I would say obviously lone players Harry Kane uh, and Jason Punchin, and then um, my personal one would be Trotz. Just through, uh, I don't think he was probably appreciated. Um, you know how good he actually how good he actually was um, um, at that time. Yeah, very very good um, very good answers. Uh, number ten, you left Mill seven year, seven years ago now, but would you have liked to be at the club for longer? Yeah, I'd have loved to stay. I, I, I think I was. I was record saying as I'd enough to stay longer um, you know initially when I joined I wasn't I was you know as I said apprehensive um, but you know like I said as soon as I, I stepped in the front in, in the door I loved every minute of it um, and um, it was somewhere that I kind of I saw myself being being at Millwall for a long time you know probably uh, retiring you know retiring there having you know envisaged I envisaged having a you know a successful few years there five or six years whatever it may be and um, and kind of just seeing out my career there, and I would have been very happy to do that. Um, so yeah, I definitely wanted to stay. It's a great club, um, great, great atmosphere, uh, great atmosphere on game day, and the fans were all, always good to me. Um, so yeah, I definitely wanted to stay, but at the end of the day, injuries kind of uh, um, determined my, my length of time there. Um, so you know that that that's life, isn't it? Um, but yes, uh, in short, yeah, I would have loved to stay longer. <laughs> Uh, that's about just about concludes the interview. So um, I hope my viewers enjoy it as much as I have. Uh, thank you for joining us, Tamika, and um, and and uh, let you get on with your day. And good luck for the future. Hi, thank you very much for having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tamika. Thank, thank you. you.